vetted uh, who are looking for work, so in most cases either unemployed or underemployed, mm -hmm. with homeowners who are looking for their services, and we do it through an app and a website. Um, and the value proposition for homeowners is that it's quick, convenient, uh, easy to use. We handle all payments online. Yeah. Um, and we have a, a whole you know, big bunch of, uh, or big group of sweep stars. So if anything does happen with your um, assigned sweep star, we can slot in a replacement very seamlessly. And then for sweep stars, it's helping people find um, employment. Um, and so I, I suppose my background, so I um, studied uh, science, so I was a science student, um, studied genetics, uh, postgrad at university, okay. um, finished a PhD in genetics and was all set to become a researcher working on uh, genetics research, okay. um, loved biotechnology, um, but uh, started to just think about impact and the impact that I could have on um, people around me, on South Africans, on the world, yeah. um, and realized that in that field, I'd probably be stifled to a degree yeah. um, by research funding, by the length that it takes to, to, to take research from, from research to development and then to, to therapy and, and application, um, and wanted to go into business. And so okay. I um, worked as a management consultant for two years, just to learn a bit about business and then found out that I didn't enjoy being an employee. <laughs> uh, wasn't cut out for it. Um, and left management consulting. And, um, and then with my, my co-founder and myself, so my co-founder is my husband Amazing. as well, and, um, and our CTO. Before or after he was co-founder? Uh, before, so <laughs> husband before co-founder. <laughs> um, yeah, no workplace shenanigans going on. <laughs> um, and so we were, you know, both at the time, I was a management consultant. He was working in, in corporate, um, leading a, a team of uh, developers. And we were just thinking about what we wanted to do next and thinking again about impact and wanting to do something that was impactful, that could scale, that could you know, apply our minds to something that could be big. Mm. Um, and you know, I'd been thinking about this and went on holiday from uh, Joburg to Cape Town. Yeah. Uh, we're at our holiday house. Uh, the lady who cleans that house was um, just about to go away on holiday, mm. and we realized that we needed a replacement. Okay. And uh, and went through a search trying to find a replacement. And I suppose the short story is that <laughs> like through that search, uh, we realized that there was a real need for a business like Sweep South, both from a customer and from a cleaner Definitely. point of view. Uh, I think it's great when people start businesses to solve their own problem. Yeah, there's a real drive to make it work. Yeah, yeah, um, and and <laughs> you and, you're, and you know when you think about customer issues and solving customer problems, you don't have to look very far. Exactly, definitely. Um, I'm just back to what you were saying about management consulting. I mm. think obviously we have a, a shared yeah. history at the yeah. same company. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was it that I guess was there a trigger that made you leave yeah. or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's why I left. Um, no, I mean I, there were a few things. So the one thing was just um, in general around around impact and having ideas and wanting to do things and wanting to take your work further. I didn't mm. I didn't like having to answer to someone <laughs> for every little decision. Fair enough. Um, I didn't like the model, which was a surprise to me. I didn't like the fact that um, you know you paid on a per hour basis, which means that regardless of how much, how productive you are, you, you, you have to be visible for the amount of hours you're being paid for. It, it just it didn't make sense to me. Mm. Um, and then I also um, kind of looked at the weighting between um, the level that you're at and how people get promoted and how that's weighted against actual, actual value to the company. Yeah. And so there was this odd notion of, you know, so-and-so has been at the company before you, they yeah. need to get promoted first, otherwise they're gonna be upset. Okay. Um, and that, that last one was kind of the, the like the interest. final thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, no, I can, I can definitely relate, um, probably to all of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, you know, you probably had a number of ideas and, and yeah. Sweep South is obviously the one you landed on, but yeah. how did you decide which one was gonna be the big one for you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, so that's a, that's an interesting one because we did have other ideas. And in fact, just like the name Sweep South comes from a, it's a, like a derivative of one of the other names. So okay. um, we like the idea of marketplaces. We like the idea of two-sided marketplaces. Um, and we'd initially thought about a travel company that was okay. That was where you were booking travel and you know coming into South Africa and booking travel experiences. Great. Um, and so we called it Shift South, as in you know moving southwards. Oh, and uh, we still actually registered as Shift South. <laughs> um, and but 
eventually just started to think about the market, the available market, where the tourism industry in South Africa was going. And then also, um, are we interested in, in, in tourism? Like yeah. personally, do we travel a lot? <laughs> and we, we don't. I mean, we've always okay. just been so busy that we don't travel. And so yeah. um, sweeps out, one out. But were you doing a lot of cleaning? <laughs> um, no, but you know, as South Africans, uh, so firstly, you know, the opportunity that we'd had, yeah. but also South Africans, you know, so many South Africans are familiar with the domestic work industry. I think, yeah, absolutely. Um, just because so many people have, have been brought up in homes where there are domestic workers or where parents or aunts or grandmothers have been domestic workers. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's an industry that I think is super familiar. Yeah, definitely. And so a, a lot of our viewers I know are actually in corporate jobs and I guess looking at starting something on the side yeah. and I guess debating when is the right time to leave the corporate yeah. job and go f go whole yeah. hog. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that you could share? Yeah, I think, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's up to you, you know, when, um, if it's when you're ready from a financial point of view or not and you just want to kind of yeah. jump into it without necessarily having an idea. We didn't <laughs> have like a fully fledged idea when we left. Okay. Uh, we, yeah, we certainly <laughs> didn't have like the concept of sweeps out kind of waiting yeah. there to, to jump into. Um, but I think when you feel like you've had enough and I think, you know, for me it was like driving to work and just, and I think the company that I worked for was amazing. I, mm -hmm. I have amazing friends that I met there and, you know, our managers were really fantastic people and I think about people who've impacted my management style in a positive way. It's, it's a lot of people I came into contact with the company. Yeah. Um, but it's where you just, you're not enjoying every day and you're kind of going into work thinking, I, you know, I hate this. I, yeah. I often, like, I wonder why people who are at a particular job or, you know, in a position in life kind of hate it and you're going through it and you're not enjoying it, but you don't do anything about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and then the other kind of alternative I suppose answers just like as soon as possible like you yeah. think you have an idea you're young you're not getting any younger yeah exactly. um, <laughs> someone else like the space spaces are generally competitive someone yeah. could come up with the same idea and do it super well so maybe yeah, as soon as you have a good idea go for it I think that's good advice particularly well I've noticed in South Africa compared to Australia sorry Australian viewers, <laughs> but um, there's a hustle here yeah. there really is everyone is scrambling yeah. which is amazing if yeah. you're an entrepreneur and you're in that environment because yeah. you're lifting each other up yeah. but yeah, yeah. if you're sitting in your job kind of just trying to make it work a yeah. couple of hours a day it's it's tough yeah absolutely. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so just thinking about the early days i guess once you had landed on sweep south yeah. rather than shift south yeah um what did that look like what were some of the main challenges you faced getting it off the ground sure so i think um you know some of the early things were just um just like opening up a like registering the business opening up a bank account yeah um <laughs> Getting a like an online bank account was super difficult. It took about two months to try and like okay. convince the bank that we weren't looking for like a physical payment like POS. We were looking for yeah. like an online merchant banking account. <laughs> super frustrating. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, getting tr trying to choose the right payment gateway. Um, yeah. So a lot of the like that just early early prep work was challenging. Yeah. Um, and then once we'd gotten started, it was things like. Um, so funding, we bootstrapped the business ourselves for the first year. So just making that decision was pretty tough. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, you you have this innovative idea, um, and you have to tell customers firstly what it is, and then that they should <laughs> trust you, and you're not a scam, and yeah. this is how you do it. So there was a lot of educating um, that that we had to do upfront, and that was pretty expensive. Definitely. And I imagine, particularly in this environment. And convincing customers to let domestic workers that they hadn't, I guess, personally vetted into yeah. their homes yeah. was quite a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you get around that? Uh, so we did it through uh, two things. The one is the actual um, sweep stars. And by the way, sweep stars is a term that we've coined ourselves. Okay. Uh, we didn't like <laughs> using the terms maid or char or um, even domestic worker. Okay. Because to us, sweep star means so much more than that. Yeah. Um, and we also just wanted to move away from this um, terminology that's quite loaded with like negative connotations yeah, due to definitely. South Africa's history. Um, so, uh, you know, I think, um, yeah, it was, uh, sorry, <laughs> what were we saying? <laughs> you <laughs> you just got a bit distracted, yeah, yeah, <laughs> thinking about two stars in the term. Um, we were talking about uh, like building trust with your customers. Yes, yeah, sorry. So, uh, so the one is just the vetting that we do with the with the sweep stars and it's things like making sure we see people in person yeah um doing background checks references criminal checks 
Um, so making sure that when someone joins the platform, we can really vouch for them okay. and their background. We also have insurance, which isn't something that's common. <laughs> like, you know, if you work with a domestic worker at yeah. home, kind of one on one, uh, you don't generally kind of have insurance that covers any accidents that may happen. And so often you end up paying for something that's broken or, or the, yeah. the domestic worker. Um, and then the other thing was the site. And like, we had to make this conscious decision between you know, when we design the site, do we design it to look really nice from a design point of view yeah. and to look kind of very high end or do we include elements that might not look as nice but that South Africans are used to when it comes to online transactions. And so okay. we put this like big fat lock on our, uh, <laughs> you know, on our booking funnel and it looked awful and, yeah. you know, it's pixelated and it looks really bad, but it's what people have come to associate with, like, this is a safe website. Okay. Um, and so we had to do a lot of that. And then also things like FAQs, so we tracked our FAQs, looked at the sorts of questions that people were looking at yeah. and were interested in around the service. And then we'd uh, kind of rank the questions according to what was interesting and, and uh, important to people. Uh, we'd look at how people were using the site. Yeah. Um, so a lot of a lot of um, getting over initial hurdles about what the service is and trustworthiness yeah. uh, was due to using data okay. to, to track what people were, were Which thinking. Which makes sense. And, and, and it's your background yeah. uh, in a way. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, there's actually, you're reminding me of a quote that Yossi, who ran Textiles here, uses, which is, I'm going to misquote him, but it's something like, if the ugly baby doesn't cry, then keep the ugly baby or... He's going to correct me, <laughs> right? Essentially, like, if, even if it looks ugly, if it's working for you, just keep, keep rolling with yeah. it. And yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a, it's, it's a kind of, like, well-known uh, lean startup methodology type yeah. thinking that it's just, you know, if you're, I mean, firstly, if the first version of your product doesn't embarrass you, yeah. then you've taken too long <laughs> to launch. Exactly. Um, but also, um, getting it done is better than perfect. So just, yeah. just execute, and then, and you can always iterate. Definitely. I actually think... Like perfectionism is something that female entrepreneurs in particular yeah. would say is a challenge for them personally when they're starting businesses. Yeah. So as a female entrepreneur yourself, is that something that you had to kind of struggle to overcome or were there other challenges? At being yeah, I mean, I think, I think personally not, um, not necessarily perfectionism um, because I'm quite execution focused and I get impatient with lack of execution. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but what I did have to kind of get rid of and a lot of this was due to like my, the academic background and the management consulting background was yeah. like this, this focus on collecting data to answer any eventuality yeah. and knowing when is enough data versus like, you know, when, when can I now move and execute? Okay. Um, so I had to stop myself from like analysis paralysis yeah. and asking like, you know, but like what could happen? <laughs> what if you know, Ad nauseum. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I'm used to doing those. Um, and so, I mean, as a, f as a female in tech, mm. or almost also as a non-technical founder, I yeah, guess, yeah. Um, non a non-developer, yeah. what were some of the struggles that you faced building yeah. a tech-based business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the first thing was just, like, trying to understand the tech behind it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, when we initially had the idea, I said to my co-founder, Alan, I was like, we've been on an Uber in San Francisco, why can't you just build an Uber for home cleaning <laughs> in, like, two or three weeks and we're done? Like, exactly. what's what? And he was like, yeah, yeah, he was like... <laughs> No, like very annoyed. So <laughs> one of the first things that I did was to was to take um, a course over a couple of weeks um, learning Python and, and, and really just like how, like the basics of coding. So like, okay. you know, if you're building something, what does that actually feel like? Yeah. Um, and then also learning a bit of um, HTML and CSS to, to help with doing the website so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like that annoying person who's like, you know, Can why is this getting done? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I could just do it myself. Mm. Um, so, um, and I mean, certainly not skilled to any degree, but just trying to understand what that meant. Um, and then I think, you know, there were other things like, um, you know, being completely reliant on my co-founder for anything and everything that was technical. I think I was in a better position than a lot of founders because uh, technical skill is, is difficult to come by and is expensive. Yeah. Um, so certainly like very lucky in that in that degree <laughs> and lucky that my co-founder was my husband who I could you know <laughs> like 12 a.m. Right <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it was it was a lot you know if you say you're building a business that's reliant on tech um, 
in the early Indeed. days, we were we literally had multiple releases every single day. Okay. Um, and you know, talking about getting over those customer hurdles around trust and everything else. Yeah. You know, you've got to respond to those quickly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and it's <laughs> difficult to do if you're not technically proficient or if you don't have a technical founder. Definitely. And also, like as you build out a team of developers, it, yeah. it's important to at least be able to understand how oh, much work sure. is happening yeah. and the yeah. kind of deadlines that you should set for different yeah. things. And yeah. it's really hard to do. Yeah. 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 And to be able to talk to them in a way where yeah. they like understand and respect <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah. Absolutely. So like you know, luckily Alan's my husband. If I'd gone to a, <laughs> another dev and been like, please can you build me an Uber in like two or three weeks in 2014? Uh, yeah, would have been um, laughed out of the room. Love it. <laughs> um, so something that you mentioned earlier this week um, when, we, when we were on the panel was like your support structure. So yeah. obviously you have Alan. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, can you talk about almost your extended support yeah. structure and the importance and role yeah. they've had for you? Yeah, I mean that's been um, it's it's been such a big part of kind of allowing us to to take the the liberties that we have with the business. Because the thing is, you know, um, we're parents as well, um, yeah. and when you're building a business, it's I mean it's like you have another child. Yeah. And unfortunately <laughs> for your other kids, it wasn't a decision that they were involved in. So you know suddenly there's this other thing called sweep south that's yeah. entering into all of our lives, and, and so it never sleeps. and it never sleeps, <laughs> and it needs constant attention. Mm. Um, so uh, you know my my parents both work full time and. Um, you know, and, and, and my mom probably harder than, even harder than I do. Yeah. Um, but I'm lucky that I have, I have three siblings. Um, my sister lives in, um, in Pretoria, but, you know, has okay. like flown down a couple of times nice. to come and look after the kids. We were, you know, we were in 500 startups and spent um, oh, wow. four months in San Francisco um, and, you know, needed someone to look after the kids during that time. So, yeah, yeah so they've been fantastic. And then also just, um, you know, having nanny at home to help when you come home late and, and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Definitely. And so what was 500 Startups like to participate in? I know they did the road trip around uh, South Africa yes, recently. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Geeks on a Plane, they were recently here for okay. Geeks on a Plane. Got a road trip, a plane uh, trip. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Bought a plane full of uh, their partners and investors, um, which was fantastic. I mean, great to see everyone again. Yeah. Um, but the experience going there was, was also really great. Um, we knew that we were going there because they had this amazing experience around marketing and digital marketing and marketing startups they also had experience with marketplaces okay um so it was kind of like if you want to you know go to the top top internationally who you go to um and i think what's great about them is that you honestly feel like you're a family yeah. when you're part of that network oh, nice. um our um kind of mentor um there has come to cape town and stayed with us you know oh, when nice. he visited and uh, cool. and we showed him around and um, we're hopefully going to Burning Man with him next year. So oh, like wait, Burning Man or Africa so, Burn? Uh, uh, Africa Burn, sorry, oh, Africa good, Burn. And Burning, no, Man, no. Burning Man, hopefully, Both. the year after. Um, oh, turn on you. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, it's honestly like a family and it extends um, like way beyond um, the four months. Yeah. Um, and so they really, you know, they have this like hashtag uh, 500 family um, and it's it's That's it's not nice. just lip service. It's a it's, it's a real. real thing, yeah. And you have this network that you can call on for literally anything. That's amazing. And so, are there many South Africans that get into that? Or so we were the first South Africans to oh, to amazing. be accepted into the program. Okay. Um, and so, do you I have some tips on? Yeah, I mean, I think so. F the first thing is, I suppose, get get in touch with us, yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll be happy to to listen to your business idea and. Um, you know, and uh, and and if it works for 500 to forward you, because a, a warm intro is always better than you yeah. know, trying to go through the whole application process yourself and fighting amongst thousands of applications that come in internationally. Um, and then the other thing is, so you know, for them it's around um, market size. So uh, you know, you're competing with U.S. companies mm. that um, that are looking at ultimately, you know, tackling billion-dollar markets. Yeah. So market size is big. Um, the team. I think technical ability is important, or okay. at least having a team that's able to execute. So if you don't have a technical co-founder, do you have a, tech, a technical employee at yeah. that stage? Yeah. Um, and, then, and then, I mean, traction-wise, like they're, they're looking for businesses that are pretty well established already. So it's definitely okay. not, in general, in the very, very early startup phase or okay. idea phase, yeah. No, that makes sense. And so um, I guess that's what it takes to succeed in, in these types of international programs. Yeah. But if you're an entrepreneur that's focused on South Africa, yeah. at least to start with specifically, are there any traits that you see that I guess the most successful entrepreneurs have or yeah. are working on? Yeah. Um, 
I, I mean, I think having a strong founder team is super important. Like, I was shocked to, to discover the amount of startups that don't make it because of some issue between founders. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so having a really strong, um, well-connected uh, founder team that get on well and have good good synergy. Um, <laughs> a good banter. A good banter, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, like market size is a big one. I think, you know, testing your idea out as early as possible. Yeah. Um, being able to build out as much of that idea as possible by yourself before you, yeah. you know, want to enter a program or get an investor on board. Yeah. Um, I think grit is a big one. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it's... I mean, it's incredibly difficult to run a business. It's incredible. It's a difficult every day. Yeah. It requires so much of you, physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, so, uh, I think a lot of good founders have just stuck around and not given up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just got to go and tell everyone you're going to do it, and then it's like exactly. The then it's out there. Then it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but you mentioned mental. So, what what are some of the things or techniques you use to stay in the right mindset or pick yourself back up? Um, so. I mean, I think my, I'm, yeah, I'm quite a competitive person. I have quite a dogged personality. So I'm kind of, yeah. once I set out <laughs> to do something, I'm quite stubborn and I want to get it done. Um, uh, but, you know, I think um, taking a bit of time out to, to yourself, making sure you carve out time for kind of self-performance, yeah. rest, um, doing things that you enjoy outside of the business. So, you know, our biggest challenge being a, a married co-founder team is that like yeah. the business is there all the time. Yeah. There's no one outside <laughs> of you to be like, hey, you know, let's just scale it back and can we talk about something else? All yeah. you want to talk about is the business. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I think it's important to have, you know, some sort of balance, kind of counterbalance to that. Yeah. Um, and so do you just have set times when you force yourselves? Oh, no, we tried or? that. It didn't work. Yeah. Like we, we <laughs> that wouldn't work for me. Yeah, my partner <laughs> feels like he's in my business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, I don't know, you just naturally like <laughs> gravitate towards it. So it's pretty much like kids in business. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. You know, I think, I think the stage that we're at, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, and then I think also having people around you. So, you know, my support network help with kids and with responsibilities, but they also help with just perspective. Um, yeah. You can get into this <laughs> mindset where it's like, you know, everything is about your business and you know, you get super boring around your friends because they're like, oh, she's just going to talk about her business again. Um, but so it's good to have people who just like, listen, yeah. you know, like there's a world outside of your startup. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but your, your journey has looked, I guess, at least from my perspective, from the outside, like yeah. almost, you know, thriving and overnight success, to use the word today, I actually hate. But, you know, have there been many failures along the way? Um, yeah, I mean, so... so what we've done well, I think, is, is, is fail quickly and learn, learn very quickly as well so that those failures don't become bigger issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are things like, um, you know, we, we had difficulties with hiring very early on um, and kind of made hires on the spur of the moment because we needed someone yeah. versus, um, you know, hiring more slowly and kind of being more precious about your business and you know the fact yeah. that you're inviting someone into this thing that you put so much into yeah um, and and those are things we had to take care of really quickly mm -hmm. um, we also on more than one occasion have raised too late okay. uh, so so <laughs> so well after we should have we should have started the process yeah um, <laughs> but you're still around so. we're still around so that that's been okay but you know I think the stress and yeah. the pressure that comes with that um, is difficult and you also put other stakeholders under pressure as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. Um, so, uh, so that's been tough. And then also just, you know, the type of business that we're in. So um, there have been times where we've let, you know, let a customer issue kind of sit for too long, mm. um, you know, and it comes back to bite you and you kind of think about it later on and you think it shouldn't, it, it really shouldn't have taken that long to sort out that issue. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but they're all things that we've, that we've learned from and, you know, yeah. and, and try to resolve as quickly as possible. And so what's next for Sweep South? Are you going global, wealth domination? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think when we think about the solution we've designed, um, it's, uh, it's really well tailored to emerging markets and yeah. the, the issues that a lot of emerging markets face and, and the opportunities that exist in a lot of emerging markets. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of emerging market economies will have a, a fast-growing middle class who are working uh, longer and longer hours yeah. and have... Um, slightly more disposable income um, so they have less time to do things at home themselves yeah. and at the same time that's balanced out by 
Um, and this is unfortunate, the unfortunate reality of these kind of high Gini coefficient countries, but where you have this um, lowly skilled or unemployed uh, potential labor force who are looking for work um, and who know how to do this, this type of work. So those markets look really attractive. Um, and we're certainly looking at expansion outside of South Africa uh, next year and then into other emerging markets outside of the continent um, from 2019 onwards. Um, and then other types of services. So home yeah. cleaning is, is a you know is a no brainer because of our own experience. But yeah. like, what else can you sort out in people's homes yeah, absolutely. Um, that they don't want to do or <laughs> can't do very well? Yeah, well, there's a lot of things I can't do very, very well. So. <laughs> the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, amazing. Cool. So I mean, we're we're almost done, but I think it would be nice uh, to, if you're willing, just share a few tips on to our audience who mm. potentially are entrepreneurs thinking of starting out or currently starting out? Yeah. It's kind of like your top three tips or words of advice. Um, geez. Uh, so I, I think the one would maybe go back to just like, just try and do it um, as soon as possible and focus on execution. I think um, as, uh, as entrepreneurs, there's so many, it's a scary journey and there's so many reasons why not to do it. Yeah. And you can definitely, like if you think not too hard, you'll find lots of reasons why not to do it. But I think, it's important to just execute, uh, pull the trigger as quickly as possible, and then just keep on making little steps forward yeah. um, and progressing. Um, having a good support network, both family-wise but also mentor-wise, yeah. um, that was a mistake that we made. We didn't, we didn't have mentors, and still don't have any formal mentors. Um, and I think certainly from a like a pain point of view, we probably could have <laughs> avoided a lot of pain just yeah. by like having a voice of reason who's who just has your best interest at heart, so who isn't thinking about it from an investor or an employee or a parent or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever it is, someone who's <laughs> a bit more objective than that. Um, and then uh, the third thing would um, would be to, to do something that you're super passionate about. Make sure that um, whatever you do, it's something that you can see yourself doing for the next like 10 years at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough journey um, and you've got to, of keep on drawing back on why you're doing this yeah and that why has got to excite you yeah definitely you're in it for the long game yeah. <laughs> amazing well thank you so much for coming in it was awesome to chat to you pleasure um and i'm sure i got a lot out of it so i'm sure our, our viewers and listeners did also <laughs> um so yeah thank you so much cool thanks for having me <laughs> no problem thank you <laughs>